keep having this quiet conversation about Chan and the microphone and getting close to it. I keep motioning oh, yeah. him to get close. Well, I, I like to look you in the face when I'm talking because it's yeah. just how I do it. Well, I, that's I look how you, you in do. the eyes. Yeah, you're talking to somebody. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just And the microphone's always facing the computer. You feel and like you're, you're facing <laughs> it? Yeah, I know. All right, well, we can do it like this. That's yeah. all good. It's a conversation now. It's yeah. It's just talking to a microphone. And truthfully, that is the idea of this entire thing. Okay, we've gone one minute without introducing ourselves. Yes. I am Chan the Man Lee Gray. Uh, yes. <laughs> This is... Yes, the art cast. This is Sonny G. Yes. And uh, uh, a a part of the art group of us and uh, the art cast is our way, our version of you getting to know us. And then we talk about our artwork and talk about art in life itself. Because for us, life is art. See what I did there? I see what you did there. (laughs) I know it sounds like a marketing thing, but the truth is... I I prefer life on a canvas, if I'm being honest. Life on a canvas? I I like that slogan. That was a a tagline that I've used for years. Here's the point. Oh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, maybe. But the the point of it all is that uh, for us, art is something we, we... pull out of us mm-hmm. and put it on the canvas. There are I've people who don't do that or can't and or don't want to. They don't enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And that's obviously fine. But this is our way of expressing, you know, the, the dark stuff ends mm-hmm. up on the canvas and the fun stuff. And I've got more of like a Van Gogh uh, way of doing it. Like uh, uh, Van Gogh, whenever he would paint, he'd paint, f- he'd paint for like a month and then go like a year without painting. And that's kind of how I do it. I get this really creative itch for a while, mm-hmm. and then I, after I finish the piece I'm, or piece or pieces I'm working on, I just kind of stop and then relax, and then whenever I feel it again, that's when I get back into it. Sometimes well, it can take months. Well, when you first mentioned Van Gogh, I thought to myself, oh, my God, he's going to he's gonna compare himself artistically to Van Gogh. But no, oh, that craziness, no. I got you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the, menta- the mentality, because we're I, both crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, good gosh. Don't, you know, don't start cutting off pieces of your ear. We're all good, but <laughs> 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 No, seriously, I, I get what you mean. Oh, yeah, I think I'm just like a better Van Gogh. Yeah. Uh, if you look at Pianos in Space, it's like a better Starry Night, in yeah. my opinion. <laughs> yeah, hey, good job. Why do you go thumbs up? I'm doing an air thumbs look, up. Look, if you look at Ocean Waves and compare it to the Screaming Face <laughs> one, I don't know its name. Oh, uh, it's just better, you know. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the long, oh, my God. No, we. If you can't I, tell, I was being extremely sarcastic then. Yeah, if you good lord. <laughs> no, I was just making a joke about that myself. But but I do understand exactly what you're saying. I think we mentioned last time, during this whole COVID thing, COVID twenty twenty, mm-hmm. for me it it kind of freed me up because I kept before I would have this pressure of I need to paint that every brushstroke needs to have an impact and it's Mm going to sell and make millions and all that and then when COVID happened nobody was going to buy anything good lord you you got to get food on your table and so for me it was well screw it I'm not painting for somebody else I'll paint for me and just Mm -hmm. yeah I just couldn't stop I I really find it hard to paint whenever I don't have a passion for it like the piece that I'm working on of course I I used to be able to just crank stuff out because I was experimenting with new things and yeah different uh, techniques and uh, it just didn't have any passion behind it. And that's what it really lacked. And um, you can tell when a piece has passion, when a piece doesn't have passion. That's the entire entirety of that phrase. Mm. Life is art. Because in that case, when you do have the passion, art becomes life. Art is life. It feeds mm. us. On a personal level, it feeds us. You, you, could, um, you could have that same passion in whatever it is in your life. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing that if you... If you don't have passion, there's something missing there for you. There's yeah, something that you've not myself. dug down and, mm-hmm. and you, don't, you don't have a hold of. It kind of gets us into our, our topic today because you lack the, the confidence to, to grab a hold of that thing in your life and you've just kind of floating. Mm-hmm. There's no movement. There's no flow to your life. There's just simple floating and just kind of... Like in a sea, just mm-hmm. kind of floating around, wondering, I don't know where the shore is. Am I going to drown? Are the sharks going to get me? That's this whole point of having, for us personally, having art in our life. It's our way of expressing what's on the inside. You can tell it on a piece that I have that I've given myself to. 
versus not. Mm-hmm. When a, when a piece that you're passionate about, I, I, what I find is that uh, whenever I'm working on a piece that I'm passionate about, mm-hmm. I, I tend to make great progress every day I work on mm-hmm, it, but it mm-hmm. still takes months to finish. Yeah. Like, I'm making extreme pro- uh, progress each time I touch the canvas, mm-hmm. but it still takes me months to finish just, it. You just don't touch the canvas uh, often, so it looks like it takes you Well, not only that, ton of time. it's just that it's you always don't you always feel like it's not done. It's just oh, for it's sure. a project for oh you. Oh, my God. And what, what do you do when you finish your project it's it's almost depressing when you think there about really it. is a you, letdown you finish it you're it like there? i've been working on this for two years and then and then you finish it and you're just like uh what now yeah you that you hit that very oh my god that's deep because mm-hmm. i i one of our uh, shows that we did that one of the live shows mm-hmm. it, we, there had been such a build-up to it an incredible day uh, I was told by the, the lady, the person that was over the event itself. We won't be named. She said, yeah, well, she said you were the, the, the best in interaction and people responding to mm-hmm. because of how we did what we did and our intention, just uh, the after, way we do it. Yeah, we, it was we drew awesome. In a, we, I, it was really cool. We like drew in a crowd and everything. Oh, and my we, God. And we worked together as a team. That, that was my favorite part. I was it. the best. It, it, it just wasn't that you were up there painting and then we were sitting and watching or something like that we were all interacting with each other and doing oh, stuff man that was my favorite part about it but we we could see you afterwards so we saw the mental toll it took on you that you'd finished this and that you'd done this and then this totally crashed mm-hmm. like within an hour i, like I was you, laid you out that you were riding this high oh and my then gosh it, immediately after it was just gone and i kind of mentally felt mm-hmm. a little down mm-hmm. like and then i yeah i was asking um it, it was like a roller coaster you had I was extreme asking, highs but then they go down to extreme lows i was telling someone well what is this my gosh I, if that's how i'm gonna feel i don't want to do this mm-hmm. and she suggested just breathe yeah and enjoy the moment and let this part be the the coasting mm-hmm. afterwards i mean you gotta understand when we did this show we were finished with our time slot um, the the leader of it, the the person in charge, walked up and said, "We got to move on," mm-hmm. and so we moved part of the the interaction into the hallway. Yeah, we we got people to come up there and, and take pictures with it. Still, it, it was it was a pair of wings, and uh, people would t- get up in front of it about ten feet wide. We've got a hey, one of the videos on the sunnyg.com site mm-hmm. has uh, has a small little yeah. cut together video of it, and at the very end, you see the picture of me standing there with the wings behind. It would be like like if you actually had wings. Yeah. It would be, this is how big they would be. That was the whole intention. I have to say the worst part about COVID. Well, okay, I shouldn't say the worst part because that means like all the 200,000 deaths and stuff like that sounds not as bad. A bad thing. But like one of the things that I don't like about it is that we can't do any more shows. We haven't been able to do shows. We have to figure that part out. We what? need to move this to uh, a We're, video version. There was version. supposed to be a, a virtual show that was going to happen, yes. but it just didn't happen. And it just it didn't. There, there yeah. were some last minute stuff, and yeah. and and that's you know what we just we got to figure that part yeah. out. Maybe we do Patreon, or one it's of the other Patreon. Patreon. There you go. <laughs> uh, or one of the other things where people can watch and witness, and and mm-hmm. even us, um, have a, a like a mini school where we can. I can send you all the basics of what you mm-hmm. need because a lot of times people ask me, I r- really think I want to get into it, but um, I don't know what to, where to start. And I, I'm like, well, here's here's what you need. Maybe we can uh, send you the basics shipped to you, obviously, and then on a, on a, a time where we get each other on camera and I walk you through a, kind of a, a here's the basics and here's what you do, and then you flow and you do your thing. So that, that's an idea we've, we've bounced around. But the, all right, let's segue from that to, you know, we had talked about a, a, a versus topic here, humility versus arrogance. Yes. To do that show, to do it live in front of people, and then I knew we'd record it, and you kind of sort of hope that people mm-hmm. respond to it. What, what is it that could... Um, make that happen on an inside part do i walk up with such an arrogance and confidence that i I look down at people and say hey if you don't get this 
you're just you know you're, artistically you just, you, stupid. You, you, you just know? don't get it. How you, do you, you oh, don't like art? Or sure. <laughs> or do you walk up so humble that somebody feels like how does he even pick up a brush? Mm-hmm. So obviously life is about balance. I, I think it's more about being down to earth. That's that's what you have to be to do it because you have to be interactable. The real and you vibe. Have to, and you have yes. To, uh, and when you go up to someone and they're like, oh, yeah, well, what's this piece about? You go, well, you tell me. What, what do you see when you see this piece? Sure. I can tell you what, what I was going through mm-hmm. and uh, and, you, and and then appreciate whatever said, no matter what it is, whatever is said about it specifically. Yeah. I like the way this color is this. And you, you have the humility to say, I appreciate that. If you have the arrogance, it's one of those things where you look at it and say, that's not a big deal. This is what it is. Yeah. That's... That is the direction. I, I think that's a very common thing in the art world is that uh, b- these people get so high on themselves that they're just really arrogant about it. And, and they, they're like, oh, yeah, I know I'm the stuff. I I'm, know I'm the stuff. And it's like, uh, well, what's the battle? Uh-huh. Confidence like, has I, to be there. That was one thing, too. Before we started this, Chan was... Uh, I was fearful. Uh, very that, uh, fearful of the conversation. Well, said, I, I just didn't want it to come across as us being arrogant to arrogant people or, or something like that. Or, yeah. Uh, well, it's like when you tell somebody, or when you say to somebody, hey, I'm a humble person. Yeah, that's well, what I was hello? fearing. Hello? Yeah, that yeah. automatically makes you. It, it defeats the purpose of being humble <laughs> yes. when you say that you're humble. Yes. I'm so, the most humble person I know. Yeah, <laughs> and there's not another humble person out there. I'm going to mm. prove my humility. I am the most humble person ever. Yeah. <laughs> like like such a, a an oxymoron statement, mm-hmm. obviously. So that's just uh, from the outset, okay? Understand that, that both Chan and I, like every other human in humankind, can just be mm-hmm. Turns, okay? I really want to use a different word there, but my uh, parental advice in one sentence is don't be a turd. I, <laughs> boy, that was close. But uh, the, the, the whole idea of doing this life uh, and having a, a, a confidence about yourself that you know when you wake up that you have value, you can actually not just survive the day, but you could kick the day in the butt mm-hmm. and not just kick the day in the butt, but you can feel good about yourself as you move through whatever it is, whatever. And people do the, uh, if you ever feel bad about yourself, just look around and mm-hmm. see there's always somebody worse off. I, I get the point of that yeah, phrase, but that, that, that kind of sounds, it, it shouldn't negate kinda sounds arrogance. It, because yes, whatever you're going through is real. It's yeah. not to minimize where you're at emotionally, mentally. But this is one of those things where I keep looking at my sons and saying, guys, if you live in the with the arrogant uh, vibe about you, nobody's going to want to hang out with you. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to want to spend time with you because when they walk around beside you, they'll always feel judged or always feel being looked down upon. I, have, have I expressed that? Is that something you guys have? I'm asking. Is that something mm-hmm. you guys have taken from me? Oh, certainly. I mean, I, I try in my daily, like, a, a, mm-hmm. every day I try not to be arrogant in what I do. Because it, it, sometimes it's tempting. It, it's tempting to do it. Uh, just say something that's completely arrogant. It, you just have to take a step back, take a deep breath, and be like, it's not worth it. Or it's just, well, we just try to take a lesson from you, or at least I do. Well, I'm not I, sure about time. Well, I appreciate <laughs> that. But that's one of these things where I'm asking constantly and this is real okay this is a real conversation i'm constantly asking guys did, did, is this uh something that you, are you getting good feedback from that are you getting something that can help you in your life because i don't want to waste breath I don't want to waste time mm-hmm. i really want an impact to happen even if it's just riding down the road and just you know banging the heads to the bangers that we listen to <laughs> or whatever it, that's the intention the intention isn't to just waste away i uh i do everything I can to be self-aware. That's another topic I want to talk to you about sometime. To have some self-awareness about, did I come across as arrogant in that statement or in that thing that I was just involved in? Or did I have some humility that somebody can look at and say, you know, I I get that. I relate to that. Whatever that that is. I have an example in my head. I'm going to say it here in a second. But for you, you're in high school. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys I'm got back. <laughs> yeah, junior in high school, and you guys got back. Seventeen years old. You guys had got back from the got to stay home COVID thing, 
uh, where last year y'all got, I mean, they shut school down, right? Yeah, yeah, we had to uh, do virtual school for uh, since like March or something like that, mm-hmm. or April. March to when? So uh, it was June. June, yeah. May, June, okay. Late, late June. So a ton of people that were supposed to graduate didn't get to walk well, across the yeah, stage. Yeah, they didn't have a graduation. Oh. That's well, so I, bad. I I don't know actually. I think they did have some kind of graduation, yeah, or some or some kind of virtual graduation or something like that. I guess it depends on the school or mm-hmm. the area. Uh, I I can't remember what we did. I really can't because you know I wasn't a senior. I wasn't graduating. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's hard to know what. It's no happening. reference. No frame of reference. Yeah. Well, where I'm headed with that is that you know it, it, they made the decision when school got back that you could decide whether to keep doing the virtual deal. Or show up and walk around the classroom. Is that is that how that worked? I think he, uh, they gave us a choice uh, mm-hmm. at the beginning of the school year. They said that you can go in school and, or you can do virtual all the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, a, a lot of people did choose to do virtual, but now we have uh, you go to school for three weeks and then you do virtual for one week and then you uh, go back to school for three weeks. I got you. Maybe to kind of minimize the exposure. Yeah, that's what they're to trying people? to do. Okay. I, I think that we should just go full virtual at this point because we've had so many cases. It's just every day we get a new case. Holy and, cow. Mm-hmm. Well, Kate, so anybody listening is either headed to high school, in high school, or have done the high school thing. You understand during those years, during your time right now, you are either walking around with your head hanging feeling crappy about yourself, uh, meaning no confidence, or you're walking around feeling like you're better than everybody else, and that's super arrogant. It, it is hard to find a middle ground. And you, you are trying to feel good about yourself because people around you are laughing and judging every little mm-hmm. thing, and all you keep telling yourself is, I can't wait till I get out of school, and I'll be done with this. And I keep looking at you going, dude, feel good about you. Look at all these qualities, and I do everything I can to remind you, but... I think he's talking about me. <laughs> do it, yeah, but don't, but don't take the things that I'm saying and give, it you, a, give you a platform mm-hmm. to, to say to someone else, listen, you don't have this, this, and this. I'm this. I'm a good-looking kid. I, uh, I, I even am well-spoken. Do a little podcast. I'm painting artwork that's... Blah, 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 blah. All that stuff. It's a scenario where I'm saying, when you talk to somebody, I don't care if it's the janitor walking through the school or the quietest kid in school that everybody picks on or the school president or principal. You look at these guys and you look at these humans in the face and you, you talk and speak to them like you want to be. You know, like they're a human to. being. Like they have life. It's a different life. They're in a different place. And obviously, they have something going on in their life. Maybe it's not a big thing. Or maybe it is. So you have no idea that whenever they're blowing up at you or saying stuff downwards to you, where they're at in their life. So you just have a level of humanity, a level of humility. And you have some care. How do you do that? That obviously means that you have to have a balanced level of confidence inside of you Mm -hmm. and uh, not the push in the envelope to be the arrogant person. That happens, period. Mm -hmm. You know, I I serve sometimes at a a local restaurant that um, to help pay some bills along the way, keep the money flowing. Um, And how many times I'm, you know, I'm bumping 50 here. And I walk up to a table and start the conversation. And always, as best I can be, upbeat and welcoming and all that. And then every now and again, I get that table where somebody's looking at me and they're just talking down. Hey, get this. Get this. You know, you missed it. And you get the feeling. Good Lord. It's like that scene in Waiting where that chick is like... uh Oh, I ordered a medium rare steak, and this is medium. And you're just, <laughs> you're just oh my God, shut up! Yeah, and all, all the servers out there are going. Well, first of all, I didn't cook the thing. Mm-hmm. Good God, seriously. But two, hey, if it's wrong, I'll we'll do everything I can to fix it. A, but a you have no idea what's going on in my life. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you have no idea what's going on in my life. Heck, I may be, I may have this job just because I enjoy it, mm-hmm. and. 
most of the time people work because they need to make money. We get that. Uh, find something that you can enjoy. It's not always, you know, capable. I get it. It's an easy statement to say. I, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to say that in a downward sense. Speaking of arrogance, mm-hmm. um, but uh, it's a it's a situation where I walk away and think, man, this person must have all kinds of crap going on in their lives, because they are talking so far down to me that it, they need something to make themselves feel better. Mm-hmm. And often, instead of feeling confident about yourself and all your qualities, the way you accomplish that is to make sure everybody else around you are just pieces of crap. Mm-hmm. And you have to situate that in your head. You have to f- visualize that in your I, head. I just feel sorry for this kind of people, honestly. It, it's it's like the only thing I have at this point, and it's just really sad. You you really do have a level of um, pity, mm-hmm. and and it doesn't mean I gotta you know fight fire with fire yeah. and stoop to that level. Don't get walked on. You do not have to be. Please, yes. Don't get this twisted. This is not about me saying, hey, be so humble that people just wipe their, you know, wipe the floors with their feet, uh, wipe the, and you're the floor. It's not that at all. You do have the freedom, the responsibility, and the, the ability to create a boundary where you're not walked on. Chan, I'm saying to you, <laughs> buddy, <laughs> don't you dare allow somebody to, to do that. That's a... That becomes a downward negative, ch- you know, chink in your armor. That as you are walking through your life, you're walking around going, "Well, I'm a good guy, but gosh, man, I'm not that good." That's don't you don't listen to that. That's mm-hmm. the I try to have there. Uh, I try to have a certain level of self awareness, uh, but it's good. It's just it's really difficult to manage being extremely confident and extremely self com like uh, have self consciousness about you. Mm-hmm. It, it's just so difficult to find the middle ground where you're just you know what you are and everything like that. Like uh, I I tend to have this thing called body dysmorphia. Okay, I I uh, sometimes when I look at my or I, when I see myself, I, I feel skinny and I feel or I feel bloated and I just don't feel good about myself. Wow, um, this is. A new conversation. Keep going. Well, it it's just a whole level of self confidence, uh, of self consciousness, not self confidence, and it's just it doesn't make me feel great some days, and uh, and uh, some days I kind of I I feel better about it, and some days I just really don't feel that great. Uh, hmm. well, well, since wow. I've since I've recognized this with my uh, self awareness, uh, I've gotten better about it. I've gotten more relaxed about it. Well, good. But um, it's just it, something I struggle with. Well, I, I, I'm going to make this statement, and I'm pretty sure you'll know what this statement is, but believing it is something different. Dude, you, you have people around you that look at you and say, how many push-ups a day do you do? Good Lord. I tell my friends, yeah, my son does 350 push-ups a day. They look at me like, what? How does he even have time to do that? 400. It would take me. <laughs> Good God, you're up to 400. <laughs> So, I kind of well, didn't want to correct you because I didn't want to come off as arrogant. You didn't want to come <laughs> off as arrogant, yeah, but, you know, the truth is the truth. See, there, that is the exact, mm-hmm. I don't know, picture. It, it, some, someone might would think, ah, oh, what an arrogant thing to say, but I just hope, even the way we talk, I, I really, that's I really the don't attempt. like to bring it up because I, like, I, I don't want to come across as bragging, but sometimes I do get excited because uh, I, I have made great progress and. uh the year and a half that I've been on this uh, physical journey. Then here's a point: who you talk, who you talk about what mm-hmm. is key. In other words, if you're walking up to somebody random and saying, "Okay, can I have uh, a Zagnet bar from the uh, convenience store?" and as you're paying, say, "Hey, I can do 400 push-ups. What's up?" <laughs> There's your arrogance. Or when somebody's struggling with, hey, I'm getting into the health thing, and here's what I'm doing, and you look and say, well, when you can do 400 push-ups today, psh, give me a call. Is it, that's mm-hmm. not well, that's arrogance, what yeah. we're talking about. I'm saying a conversation between you and me, you're safe. You know, I know your heart. Mm-hmm. I know where you're coming from. Besides, I'm the one who brought up the conversation. So if I bring it up, I'm asking for the information. Yeah. There's a difference. That's a key in this conversation. Remember who you're talking to and what the, and the, context, what the, the context is. And even then, 
if you were to talk to me and you keep going and going and going, I even could look at you and say, you know, buddy, you, this is safe with me. But if you talk like this to other people, man, they're going to think you're a turd. Mm-hmm. And you would look and say, you know what? Maybe I have done that before. Well, yeah. There's I, the balance of the conversation, right? Uh, my sophomore year, I I just come <laughs> back from the summer and I had work. I'd been working out a lot. <coughs> you all right? Yeah. <laughs> almost sorry. fell out of your chair. <laughs> I was trying to cough away from the yeah. Well, I had just come back from uh, summer break, and uh, yeah. I was I, I had been working out all summer, and I had noticed some progress, and I was feeling pretty good about myself. And my friend brought it up, and I was like, well, yeah, I've been doing this and this. And then this other guy was like, yeah, I don't even see a difference. And then it it really hurt me. Of course. It, it, it hurt my self-confidence. But, uh, and you know he said that because he felt like crap about himself because <laughs> he was a turd. But, uh, yeah, uh it, it really you just have to not listen to what other people say in, in situations like that. You just have to have a confidence that comes from yourself, but just also be self-aware about it. Don't be more confident than you should be. The dichotomy it, of... Because then, then that can go into arrogance. There you go. The dichotomy of not listening to what other people have to say and listening to what other people have mm-hmm. to say is, is interesting yeah. to me. Th- this could be a whole other one, too. To ignore a downward statement like that, that allows you to, you know, grow some thick skin for sure, mm-hmm. but stay believing in yourself and confident within yourself and knowing that that person made that statement based on your own crap in their life. Yeah. They feel like crap about themselves and they want everybody around them to feel like crap so they don't do life alone. That's one thing. But in the listen to other people, what you're doing is hearing things as they are. And there is another way of looking at someone going, This person felt safe with me, so they talked about this thing in their life. It wasn't arrogant. They just felt safe with me. Um, Versus the, uh, you know, statement that's downward and uh, and is arrogant. No humility at all. The balance of it, I think the direction we're headed, and we got like a couple of minutes left, but the direction we're heading is the balance of having humility and then confidence in yourself. Um, it's pretty much the way life is about so much else, mm-hmm. right? It can be the extreme one way or another. Our last name is Gray, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Th- things in life yeah. really can't be my, white My brother or black. said it perfectly. <laughs> he, he said, uh, uh, how did he say it? I can't remember. Oh, it's something like uh, our last name is the way life is, or yeah. people should live like our last now, name. Our name is what life is, yeah. or something like it was, that. Yeah, and it, it's because life is gray. It's not. It's not really black and white all that often. Well, we gotta have him on here to correct us on that one. It was worth it. We blew that line. Thirty seconds to say a sec a line that was like three <laughs> seconds. But you get the point. I, I just couldn't remember exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get the point. You get yeah. the idea of it. I, I'm saying, very much. I think. As you're growing in your life, you want things to be black or white. You want things to be extremely one it, it way would make or life another. Easier. It I really think would. I think it would, because then you could, you know, walk through and judge this thing or that thing being, yeah. this one's right for me, this one's wrong for but me. But I've I've found that things that, that come easy aren't nearly as great as things that come hard. Or, sure, like that's the things a good that are statement. difficult. The things that are difficult to achieve in life, are, are, they just feel so much more satisfying to have. Mm-hmm. It's it's like when you cheat in a video game and you you beat the level and you're like, well, that was a hollow victory. There it, you it go. Just, it wasn't that great. That's that's a good good example. I was just trying to use a metaphor. Right? Kind of ner- no, kind of nerdy. <laughs> no, well, well, that's who we are. Yeah. We are who we are. Mm-hmm. Um, or cheating in a sport, yeah, like football. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we play we play sports. <laughs> yeah, of course we do. Just don't do it as much as. Some people, and again... That was a lie. We never play sports. <laughs> that was, well, they did. You played for years, played football. But the point is that if that's your art is life, life is art thing, then, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, do it. That's the point uh, I think, of I think the conversation. I think sports are a type of art, in, in my opinion. Or, uh, in most sports are a type of art form. Like uh, Even bodybuilding is a kind of art form, if you really think about it. Sure. Like their bodies are their canvas. I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. Mm-hmm. Sports itself becomes an expression, yeah, and uh, a a a goal that you have. And in those senses, I would say too, yes, that's what we have when we're working on a mm-hmm. piece, just letting it flow. Somebody lives inside that game so perfectly, that's their mm-hmm. 
their life, their art, their creativity, and how they can accomplish the goal. I, I get it. The things that technically are black and white in life um, are typically the easy ones, the, the, the small ones, the, mm-hmm. the ones that are, yes, uh, you can, if it's raining outside, you just don't, you just can't say, oh, I'm not going to get wet walking around because that's not true. That's a black and white statement. But you can say, I enjoy rain because I know what it makes and produces. So a rainy day might be a beautiful day to me. Mm-hmm. Now, you would be in very much in a minority, but that, that's, <laughs> that may be what you think and feel. Good for you. I think Go rainy for days it. are relaxing. Rainy mm-hmm. days can. Oh, my gosh. You sleep so good, right? <laughs> yeah. Hear that thing? Oh, banging Cuddle on the roof. to a fire. Read yeah. a nice book. <laughs> Well, so it, you that was a weak example, too. But I <laughs> feel like maybe we're at the end of the conversation. We've run out of time. But the, the, the concept, idea, point is that what we're, what we're trying to say, guys, hey, have some self-awareness and uh, know that if you walk around thinking people aren't responding to you very well or people are saying, you know, golly, you sound like a – jackass on that one then maybe you look around and to look within yourself and go maybe i can say that a little different Mm -hmm. maybe i can have a little more humility about it um just a thought and all of us that are so humble that we just walk around with our heads down and don't want to look at people in the eye lift your head up man humility is one thing but man you're good at what you do and if you're not good at what you do either figure something else out or push yourself Mm -hmm determination yes push yourself and move in that thing stop floating yes and flow that's what i'd say to you i'd set a fire under you and humility doesn't mean you walk around with uh this complete defeated lifestyle that's not humility that's unhealthy Mm -hmm. so the, the balance of what we're saying is we enjoy who we are i guess in some sense it could sound arrogant to say why are we recording ourselves and putting it out there? I like talking. Why would somebody <laughs> want to listen to us? You know, it can that you somebody could interpret that oh, really? as really. I, I just find it fun to have thing. a discussion about it. It is awesome that, and that's fun. More of, that's more of just how I feel about it. There you this. go, and me too. I, I, it's why I'm. I, it's why I feel kind of relaxed in this uh, context. And, oh man, uh, it's just because I enjoy talking to you about uh, stuff like this. It, it's easy, right? Mm-hmm. It's simple, and. We have the uh, capability to be able to record and then uh, put it online. And, and if somebody wants to listen and join in the conversation, good. We're open to that. Mm-hmm. If not, then okay. Well, there you go. Our next guest will be Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know it yet, but we're going <laughs> to ask him. We want to ask him just how did he feel when he did Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, Rocky is one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. It jams out to uh, Creed and Creed 2. For yeah, two. I, I love Creed. <laughs> ah, it's a good movie. All right, I think we, we're a couple minutes over, but uh, we appreciate you mm-hmm. you're listening. And, uh, you know, come back. Go to SunnyG.com. Check out our work. Uh, good, uh, good food, good meat, let's eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that your blessing for the food? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, well, thanks for listening. Peace and love. Peace.